Hey guys, welcome back to Flatpak Effects. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this awesome looking animation. For the Flatpak Effects crew members, you can download the project file and all the media via the link in the description below. If you're not a member, then you can also sign up via that link in the description. This looks a lot more complicated than it is. It's really quite a simple animation but there are a few elements that I've downloaded here. I went on to just some, um, basically saw some like free video files here. One of this sort of like uh, fire embers effect. I've got another one which we're gonna be using as the sort of smoke reveal. And a third one here was just some smoke. These are just like royalty free clips. You can find them online. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just create a new composition here. This can be whatever settings that you want. And we're just gonna start by creating a new solid. Now this solid, I'm gonna go for this sort of dark red color here, but you can do whatever you like. And we're also gonna be able to adjust this as we go. So I source this image here, which I've supplied as part of the download. And what I'm going to do is just basically drag this into my composition just sort of reposition this here. Now I added just a hue and saturation. You can search for these up here, but basically this just desaturates my image, just kind of gives it more of a washed out sort of look, going for the color sort of tone that we, um, you know, for this whole sort of look. The other thing is I added a bit of contrast. This is really just gonna kind of dial up on that contrast of that layer. So next I wanna basically add in like that smoke reveal. So this is where we're gonna use that video clip that I sourced here of this sort of smoke coming in. And I'm just gonna put that here on top. Now you can just sort of rotate this upside down and sort of scale this, something like that. And what we want to do is we want it to sort of, you know, act as the mat almost for that layer. So what we can do is just turn that one off with my Samurai layer. I'm just gonna link that to that layer and we want it to be the Luma mat. So it's basically going to be revealing that layer. Now what you'll need to do with this sort of thing is because it, Luma works with like the brightest parts and the darkest parts, you really need to sort of exaggerate that by adding a bit of contrast into this. So I'm just going to rename this one to Smoke. And to this, I'm just gonna turn down the saturation. You can also come up here and add the curves if you want to just kind of exaggerate that a little bit more, make it a bit more prominent. Just turn off that light because we don't need to see that. We're just using it as a reveal. Now, if you like these sort of animations, you wanna learn more about how to create things just like this, or a lot of the techniques in how to use After Effects to create all different types of animations, then check out my Animation Master course. There'll be a link down in the description below. In that, that's perfect for beginners because I walk you through the absolute basics of After Effects right up to actually creating some really cool animations and effects. If you're more of a intermediate user or you're more comfortable using After Effects, then you wanna check out my Animation Pro course. In that, we dive a lot more into more detailed animations, a lot more advanced techniques, and things that you can use to really make some awesome looking animations like the ones that you see online. We're using a lot of layering techniques and effects to really make our animations stand out. Again, you can find links to both of those courses down in the description below. There's, there's also tons of student testimonials that you can read as well. If you're serious about learning animation or you're really interested and always wanted to learn animation, then definitely check out those two courses down below. Now, one thing that you can do with that smoke layer is you can kind of have it coming in from the top or, you know, up from the, the bottom of the screen here. It doesn't really matter. It's just basically used as the reveal. You can also come in here to time and time stretch. And if I basically stretch this in half. So if I say 50, that'll speed it up. So you basically two times speed to basically get it to move a little bit quicker. And that's all I did. I basically just kind of used that to create this reveal effect. Now again, you can come back into that Samurai layer. You can mess around with that saturation if you want more or less of that sort of effect. Just just really just the overall color of that layer. So that's looking pretty good. I just wanna add in some background elements now. So what I'm going to do is I'm firstly going to make these two layers 3D. I don't need to make the background 3D. And I'm just gonna add in some a sort of smoke that's gonna sit over the background here. 
you can also make that 3D. To that layer, what I can do is come in here and set this to be screen. That's gonna sort of add in that um, background smoke there, sort of mix it in with our background. The other thing I also added in was this sort of fire embers sort of effect, which sat over the top. And to this one, what I did is I changed the color mode to be like a color dodge. That sort of just really gets it to sit into our scene a lot better. Just sort of adds a lot of mood and texture into this, which is really cool. Now I think we're ready to kind of add in a 3D camera because we want to start adding a little bit of movement. So I'm just going to right click, create a new camera. This can be like 35 millimeters and just leave that there. Now I need to make sure that all of these layers now are 3D because we need to basically make some adjustments here. And I'm going to start by creating a position property and a point of interest back here. And I'm just going to sort of scale this down. Now I can also add a little bit of camera panning and tilting. Maybe bring this one up like that. So we're kind of adding a little bit in here. Maybe bring this one down. And then here I can sort of then really sort of zoom the camera in. So we kind of end up with this little bit of movement, something like that. Maybe bring this one in a little bit more. Again, we can always adjust this as we go, but I think it's important now to sort of start, you know, layering these in three dimensional space. So with these, two layers, the Samurai and the Smoke, what I'm going to do is link my Smoke layer to that Samurai and I'm going to move it forward, something like that. I can also just to help make this layer, which is basically like the embers, I'm just going to rename it. I can turn the 3D off for that one because we don't need that layer to necessarily move with the camera because otherwise we have to move it forward. Otherwise, you know, as you see in there, as we move that forward, it's going to basically interfere. So we're just going to move, make that non 3D. And I think we can add a little bit more texture here into my background like we did in my original. So I had this like image here, which I'm just going to use as my background. So I can kind of drag this in, make it 3D, scale it right down here, sort of position it. Maybe move this. If I go to the P position, I can sort of move this back in 3D space, sort of scale this up. Something like that. Maybe move this down. It's looking quite nice. What I can do is off center this and I'm just going to grab another one of these smoke layers, duplicate that and drag it down off center this one. And we're going to use this as the sort of controller for just link that to none for the reveal of that background. So I want to set this to be that smoke too. And that's going to be the Luma sort of reveal for that. So as that smoke sort of comes in, we're revealing that backdrop. Now you can now mess around with the blending mode of that background to sort of get it to sit into that backdrop. Otherwise, what I did was I messed around with just by adding a hue and saturation and just sort of really darkened it down here, desaturated it because we don't want any elements that you put into the background. You want them to really, you know, you don't want them to be front and center. If they're in the background and they're non important as far as being what the main information you're trying to get across, then really you're just trying to get it to sink more into that background, you know, disappear more into that backdrop without it being too obvious. You can also add just another image over the top. Like I had this image here, just sort of like this, um, you know, sort of writing and it's got like a bit of an image here on the side. I can add by using the extract function, I can basically just remove that. Again, you can search for these up here, drag them on. And I'm just also desaturating it and adding a bit of contrast. These are the settings that I've used. But basically then if I make that 3D, I can then also move this back in 3D space and just sort of scale this up. And maybe if I make this one like a color dodge, like a classic color dodge, it really sort of sinks into that backdrop. 
See how it sort of just disappears, kind of really adds something interesting. Maybe move it forward slightly. Yeah, that looks kind of cool. Some other things I can also add in is maybe some elements here in my foreground. So I'm going to add in just another image here. And for this one, what I can do is sort of scale it down. And I'm just going to basically like add a cutout of one side of this. So like one samurai here. And maybe for this one, what I'm going to do is also make that 3D. We can maybe push him back in 3D space slightly. And for this one, what I'm also going to do is add a, basically take one of those smoke layers and duplicate that, put it above that samurai. And what I can do is just scale this down and rotate it. So we want it to be basically like the opposite reveal of this one. So it's coming in from the bottom and turn that one off and link this one to that layer underneath. So basically that's just following that, um, that layer, sorry, here underneath. And we want to link this one to the track map of that layer. So that number three is linked to number two and we set that to be the reveal. So it kind of adds like this reveal like that. You can also add some color or contrast into those layers if you want to remove a little bit more of those, but um, it's up to you how you want to sort of get those to sit in. And then all I did was I basically just repeated this process on the other side. So just duplicated that and created the exact same on the other side. And that sort of gives it that, um, you know, nice sort of symmetrical sort of look. Now, something else that I did just to sort of draw this whole thing together and just to kind of also give it, draw the attention to this is I added with my camera, I came down here to the camera options and I turned on uh, depth of field. So when you turn it on, you need to scale up the aperture because that's the amount of basically like blur in very basic terms that you're going to see. And then you just animate the focal distance of that layer so that that layer is always in focus. Now you can check that by going to the two view and you'll see this line here. If I move that, see that box moving up here, that represents what's in focus. So you can see it physically over here, but if I move it closer, you know for a fact, right, that layer is now in focus. And I created some keyframes by creating another point here moving along and just animating it so that that layer stays in focus as the camera moves along. You don't have to add that in, but it's just something, you know, just kind of gives it, draws more attention to like the front. The other thing is it's quite bright. So I really want to try and add something in to sort of darken this and really kind of draw the attention of the, you know, to the front and center. So I can create a adjustment layer. Now to that adjustment layer, you can add a CC vignette. So you can come up here and search for vignette and the vignette just sort of really darkens those edges into whatever, to whatever you want people to really focus in on. It's generally something you're focusing on the center of screen. These are the settings that I've used here. It just kind of draws your eye into that. And that's basically about it. You know, the camera movement that I added in here was pretty basic. I just sort of added in some, you know, basic sort of camera movement. You can select those keyframes, come down to keyframe interpolation, go to the temporal interpolation and make this continuous bezier. Then when you come into the graph editor, you can adjust these by dragging them up. This is what my graph editor sort of looks like here. This is not a tutorial on how to use the graph editor. There are, uh, again, I covered that in my animation uh, courses, mainly in Animation Master, I go into a lot more detail about how to actually use the graph editor more effectively for creating smooth animations. That's really key to any of those animations you see online. It's all really in the camera movement as far as the dynamics of the, the, the scene sort of moving. So even if you're if it's not a camera that you're animating, you're just animating the layers, you really want to spend your time and master that, you know, graph editor because that's how you get those really smooth movements. 
and that really makes your work stand out, makes it look really professional. Again, I go through that in my Animation Master course if you're a beginner. Otherwise, you can check out my Animation Pro course if you're more comfortable using After Effects. And there you go, that's pretty much how I created this effect. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up. You can also check out more videos just like this over here on the side of screen. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.